I will say I did love Draymond yelling at the fans. That was dope. And I think he knew exactly what he was doing because he's been there so many times before that he knew he was going to get ejected. And he thought, I'm just going to rile this up. So when we get back to San Fran, that bitch is sold out and they're coming for blood. Yeah. Because Warriors fans are kind of rampant, dude. They are, for like, sure. They're gonna, and I think he knew what he was doing. And he was like, if I'm going down, like, fuck it. Like, we're, this is going to be hostile in Golden State when you guys come to our house. Yeah. Because it was like, fuck, dude. He was calling Kings fans pussies. He was like, what the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> Welcome back to another episode live from the dojo. As always, you can get this podcast wherever you get podcasts. That means Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe. Um, can we have a conversation about line movement? <laughs> what a way to open the show. Because it doesn't matter. I'm convinced it doesn't matter. <clears throat> the Warriors opened up at even Sunday night. Moved all the way to minus two and a half Monday. Steph Curry's prop line opened at 29 and a half, moved all the way to 30 and a half. And the Warriors still got their dicks punched in by the Kings. Yeah. I mean, the Warriors were, I was on the Warriors, you were on the Warriors. But I only took them because of line movement. It's the first bet I think I've ever made where I strictly was like, I don't know what to do, but the line is moving. I'm going to go with the Warriors. Really? Because the line was moving that much. And that made you want to take the Warriors? Yeah, and it went from two to two and a half, and then two and a half to three right before tip. Wow. And I was like, all right, here we go. I feel like it, the movement was justified by everyone just slamming the Warriors and thinking the exact same thing. I was thinking, no way they lose back-to-back games against the Kings, right? The dynasty? <sighs> but, dude, it was almost like you were talking about the reason why you hate betting on away teams in college. Yeah. Dude, the minute that game tipped off, I literally said out loud, the Warriors are going to lose this game bad. Yeah. Just because the energy in that arena, dude. You I can't. Mean, it's so hard to beat a team when that's behind them. Especially in Sacramento where they, you know. They don't have anything. They have nothing. They've been waiting for this for years. That place is already, before the postseason even started, one of the loudest arenas in the game. And here we are in the postseason. You knew that place is going to be rocking. And, dude, I, it, it hurts even more because you lose your bet. And then, like, the coolest tradition in the NBA happens to you. The light, the beam. Yeah, not yeah. for you. No, I felt like... Getting the beam lit on you sucks, Sucks. Dude. It like, felt so sucks. good after game one, and I don't know why we faded. Like, I but, don't know what I was doing, dude. Yeah, we were just talking about it with Big Dave. At what point is it not crazy to say the Kings could win the finals? I think probably now. I don't think it's not crazy to say that now. And, like, like I was saying in that conversation... The one thing that I really learned about the Kings last night, their shooting depth is just silly. So Because De'Aaron Fox wasn't hitting shots in the first half, and somehow the Kings were running up 10-point leads. But you think about the depth of really consistent shooters they have is what like really makes it challenging to guard them. Because mm-hmm. Herter can drop it. Malik Monk can drop it. Davion Mitchell can drop it. Davion Mitchell, it seems like, gets two shots a game, and he makes them both. <laughs> Like, that's the only thing that's crazy to me. But I think the one thing Damn it. that the Kings really do well is they also kind of got lucky with their matchup in the Warriors. I think they match up very well to the Warriors. I think they're kind of a nightmare lineup for the Warriors because the Warriors don't play a lot of defense. They don't have a really dominant big man, and they have no depth. None. And the Kings can go off the bench, and their bench can score 40 points yep. in the game. So. They just got guys stepping up. <clears throat> yeah, and Trey Lyles is also, like, oddly an enforcer. Malik Monk, Kevin Herter. I mean, their shooters are shooting, and they're making their shots. And the war- the Oilers. The Oilers. The Oilers are selling, too. <laughs> the Oilers are dog water. <laughs> <laughs> but the Warriors are also with them right there. Two teams that's It, it was three always the pocket kings last night, dude. The, we faded both. Uh, I faded both. I'm I'm not, I faded both. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> you were definitely on the I'm not. Players. I'm not going to say... That late night after the gym, just to get a little bit of coin back, after already having them both straight, I went Warriors money line, Oilers minus one and a half, and had to sit there and go, just imagine if I took the plus chicken kings at home and the plus, and the chicken, plus chicken, chicken, kings. chicken kings on the road. <laughs> the pocket kings? Literally would have been, would've I could have bought a new house. would have paid fat. Could have bought a new house, dude. I was thinking about it all day, but I had I was never taking the Kings. Uh, 
the on the ice. I was always taking the Oilers last night. And what a sell job. I don't know if you watched that game. 3-1. Dude, they were dominating the entire game. I was sweating that out in a parlay. I wasn't even watching. I wasn't even thinking about Dude, it. Dude, we didn't even turn on yet. We had, I had the Stars game on. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'd rather watch this than the fucking Oilers game. Like, that game's already, like, the Oilers are going to fucking, like, beat the dick off them. Dude, and then they give up uh, the Kings pull goalie, and they score with 15 seconds left, and then we go to overtime, and Jesus, bro. Can't make it up. And then that Stars game was also insane. Did you watch that shit? Yeah, that was nuts. Nuts. And yeah. then I was like, imagine if we also parlayed it with the Plus Chicken Wild. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy like dude you i just it's sometimes i just sit there and i'm like why like why do i make it so hard yeah dude uh fruity placed a series long prize picks of like shots on goal and goal for round one mm -hmm. and i put a rack on it to, it was six leg put a rack because he put a rack i was like fuck i'll match he put a rack to win twenty five thousand. And last night, there's the first three guys had their game one. It could not have started. Like, you couldn't have asked for more. It was Better. crazy. Yeah. Kaprizov, seven SOGs. Oh, my God. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, we need 16 and a half. And so, you got seven in game one. Wow. Brent Burns needs 12, seven in game one. Wow. Leon Dreisaitl, two and a half goals. Scored twice last night. How insane is that? Dude, you're so at the table. At the table. Like, so, literally at the table. And so then we got Matthews over shots, uh, McKinnon over two and a half goals, and uh, fuck, I forget the last leg. But that we're had at the, the, That had the making of the Super Goats. We're at the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're at the table. Uh, I I was shocked. You could not have asked for more. Yeah, well, speaking of price tricks, we full faded. Yeah. What was your square again? Steph Curry Steph points. Steph Curry points. I... Yeah, Harden assists, Curry, or, uh, Curry points, Harden assists, Kanji. I just like, Harden is so inconsistent, it, it drives me insane. He is, dude. He like, is. He literally go, he'll go from one game scoring 40 to the next game scoring two points. You really got to look at, the, when you're picking prize picks, it's hard to pick winning prize picks in the playoffs without watching the games. That's mm -hmm. my, because last night, again, a gut call, I thought, you know, Fox had 40 first game. They're probably going to D him up and lock him down and force other guys to shoot and score, which means his assists are probably going to soar over and instead of his points. And that's exactly what happened. I didn't even fucking take it. But that's just knowing what happened the game previous and being able to correlate that with, you know, adjustments that the Warriors are likely to make. But I think, you know, Harden having 14 assists in game one they're probably going to adjust and and figure out, you know, how to stop that. And sure enough, what, he had six assists last night. Um, so, you know, I think that's a really important factor to picking prize picks winners right now in the playoffs. Yeah, and it's not even like he was putting the ball in the cup, though. It was yeah. like Tyrese Maxey had 33 points. Like, Tobias Harris had 18 Dude. points. Like, how did he not find his assists? This guy on Twitter. Bo, I saw that. Bo Wagner. Dude, RIP. It was. No, I thought it was Curry 10+. plus. He had nine. Was it a first quarter entry? No, dude. It was full game. Curry, Seth Curry. Oh, Seth. <laughs> dude, I was sitting there talking to my buddies. I was like, yo, this guy just made twenty five uh, like fifty thousand dollars because he's got Steph Curry to score ten plus points. No. Oh Seth. So it was no, yeah, dude. dude. I forget the rest of the fucking entry. I was like, cause he could eat the juice on Steph Curry when he's got Max who scored thirty and Cameron Johnson scored 20. Yeah, so I was like, that was genius because he can eat as much juice as he wants on Steph because he's taking so much. No. Wow. Yeah. Had nine points. How much rat shit is that, dude? Got hooked for 50 racks on a $200 bet. I don't feel too bad because that dude, Bo, hits, he hits crazy shit all the time. So it's not like it's not like one of us, you know, like fucking missing out on a life-changing payday. Mm -hmm. But still, that's an awful way to lose a bet. Oh, dude, I thought yeah. it was Steph. No, it was Seth. I was like, I literally started screaming. Not screaming, missed, not screaming, but I was like, how are we not making bets like this? And he missed a free throw, too. No. Yeah. No, we got to be better, dude. We got we to gotta be way better. That slips on Twitter. We can, we can cut that and That's show gotta that. Be way, but, we got to be way better. But uh, Moose, Moose Piss. Um, we're recording on Tuesday, so this won't come out till Wednesday, but... Um, I'm going to look like a genius. The Devils are going to win tonight. I'm trusting your, your theory here. Well, that's game three. Oh, that was the other leg, Panarin. The theory is game three. Panarin's going to rip, you said, right? Yeah, he eats on the Devils. No, but you said game three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Game three, Rangers win. Yeah. But we win game one. And two? Mm, I don't know. Probably. Who's going to rip puck? Jack Hughes. Game one. Game two, Timo. There's game just, three, you take a Zibanejad goal, you take Panarin points, yeah. and Rangers money line, and you're literally Bezos. <laughs> I promise. So I want you to actually take your gut call, because this is, this is when you, you're, you're likely to be sharp here, and then you don't take it, and you're like, Why? No, Can I know we the Devils. <laughs> we they we lose the shit out of Game Three, but we probably we we take Game One, and everyone's like, "Oh shit!" Like they might be for real. Then we might get our dick knocked off Game Two. Then Game Three, we for sure lose. The Devils remind me of the Sixers in the sense that there's just not enough puck to go around to be betting on these guys <laughs> for SOGs. <laughs> not enough puck you know, going around. like on the Sixers, you got Embiid, you got Harris, you got Maxi, you got Harden, you got. All these guys who, you know, there's just not enough ball to go around. Yeah. And then on the Devils, you got Timo, Hughes, Brat, Dougie Rips. You got all these guys. Nico. Well, I think uh, well, I think you saw towards the end of the regular season, Nico taking a step back from being like a real aggressive, yeah. aggressive, like go for the goal type yeah. guy. Uh, so it's probably going to be a lot of Jack and Timo. Um, but, I mean, th- those games are going to be exciting. The Leafs game one plays. So, you know, let's get your reaction to game one. Like, how do you feel? You took them to win the whole thing. I and they them. haven't won a playoff series in, like, 15 years. I know. The video I posted had everyone in fucking <laughs> shambles, dude. They're like, like you don't actually think they're going to win. Dude, this is the, the year they finally get out of the first round. Okay. They're going to have to play the Bruins, likely, in the second round, which is going to be a shit show, a hell of a series. Uh, and if they get past the Bruins, I think they can easily win the cup. Okay. I mean, no. I mean, you got to stay confident. My pick is the Devils to win it all. Brutal matchup to get the Rangers. I mean, you can't make that up. No, that's, that's like a great Not only series. our rival, but also, like, I think probably a team that could also win it all if they put I it together. I think, I genuinely think, my honest opinion is that the Rangers win that series. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be upset either. I think we're... They match up so well. and I, I just, honestly think we're more like the Thunder with, yeah. a, with guys that are a little better. For sure. We just have so much youth that in, like, three years, we're going to be a team that probably... 100%. You know, goes back to back to conference finals, like, goes to a cup... So, like, however far we go this year, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. Because I know, like, Jack Hughes is still just getting started. Nico Heischer is just starting to really figure it out. Like, Timo, if we end up eating that contract, I think he's on a one-two year. We still have Jack Hughes' brother in the farm system who's going to be fucking cracked yeah. out. Like, I think we're going to be fine. So, I'm not, I wouldn't even be mad if we lost the series, and I also wouldn't be shocked if we lost this series. Yeah. So. I mean, I think I like the Devils. I think they're good. I don't like the Rangers at all. I just think you guys match up really well. Very similar teams. The Rangers just have a little more experience, mm-hmm. and uh, you know they've been here before. So I don't know. I, that's for that reason. I'm, I think the Rangers move on. I think it just depends who comes out more physical. I think you know both games last night. You saw it. The Wild completely took the stars out of the game with physicality, and the Kings stayed in the game with physicality. It felt like against the Oilers. So it's like obviously playoff hockey comes down to the physicality, but it really comes down to how you respond to it. And like I, I don't know, the, the Rangers are just a team that I think are just going to punch us in the mouth a bunch, yeah. and it just depends how we respond. We don't really have a lot of big guys that you'd be like, like is Nico going to lay a shot? Like no, Jack Hughes probably might get his head taken off like once or twice. Yeah. But I mean, you saw it last night in that Wild game. I mean, that hit. I thought it was dirty. If you watch it in real time, it doesn't look as late. He also didn't really hit his head. I think because Pavelski. Either way, I think he knew what he was doing. He was like, I'm going to like make a statement here. Um. But completely took the stars out of the game, it felt like. 100%. They dude. didn't know how to respond. Like, that guy didn't get his head taken. I thought he was going to get murdered. Like, we were sitting there going, all right, like, when that guy gets out of the box, watch. Yeah. Because someone, some 6'6 six, six defender on the stars that's played six games this year is going to take someone's head off. Yeah. And it didn't seem like they responded very well. It seems like the stars were kind of like, fuck, in the wild, just almost doubled down. We're like, we're just going to beat the shit out of you all fucking game. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's what's that's what playoff hockey is about, there, right? I mean, it's pure adrenaline for three periods. Exactly, like and nuts, dude. After that goal went in for the Wild, that stadium cleared out so fast, dude. It was, dude. It was empty. That stadium and Oilers and the Oilers stadium. I've never heard more silence. Yeah, <laughs> like you heard the guy that scored yell yes. Yeah, you never hear that yeah. shit, dude. You never hear that shit. It was deafening silence. Well, I mean, especially you think about, you know, the Dallas game. I mean, you bought a ticket for a 7 p.m. game. You were there till 2 a.m. 2 a.m., bro. Just to absolutely Yeah, you got to find an Uber. They stopped serving alcohol. You probably already, <laughs> the hangover's already kicking in. 
And you just watch them lose for. And five you got hours. work tomorrow. Yeah, dude, you got work in the morning. Like, fuck, dude. <laughs> Stars fan woke up. They heard the alarm this morning. They're just like, God damn it, dude. God damn. Go watch it. ESPN. All the wild <laughs> yeah, fans going yeah. nuts. Um, we got some good games today, though. I guess we can talk about them a little bit, but then you know, let's let's preview the Wednesday games because I think that's going to be great. Oh, the spreads are already out, but um, this episode will come out after those games have been played. The same exact spreads. Um, I think the Celtics are going to sweep the Hawks. Mm-hmm. I don't think the Hawks are going to beat them in Atlanta once. No. Um, I seriously my think my hot take of the first round is I think the Knicks might sweep the Cavs. That's my I'm going to take the Knicks again tonight plus five and a half. I'm probably also going to sprinkle the money line again. It's just it's Thibodeau in the playoffs, dude. It's just defense, and the Cavs, if they can beat them game one the way that they beat them. If the Knicks steal this game again and they got to go back to New York, it's going to be really hard for Cleveland to play Mad Square Garden. Yeah. Because Knicks fans are going crazy now. And that Mad Square Garden, if you thought Sacramento was loud, <laughs> Knicks fans have been begging yeah. for anything. Uh, but it's think, defense in the playoffs. Yeah. And it's going to, it's literally what the Sacramento Kings did to, to, did to the Warriors. They're not going to outscore you necessarily, but they're going to put you in a position where every shot is hard. And I think this Cavs team is still. Like, I really don't think they have the guys to beat a Knicks team that now has experience. Like, Jalen Brunson went far last year. Josh Hart's probably, I think, a top five defender in the league. Julius Randle has already had playoff experience. And it seems like he's not selling. I don't know if you remember the last time the Knicks made a run and played the Hawks. He, like, sold the bag yeah, completely. Yeah. Um, R.J. Barrett seems like he's trying to find some consistency. And the Cavs don't really scare me, dude. No, they don't like, it's Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. Those those aren't two guys that scored a very high clip. Mobley can sometimes, but, you know, Jared Allen really doesn't scare me that much. And then, you know, Donovan Mitchell and um, Darius Garland, if I have Josh Hart, R.J. Barrett, and Jalen Brunson on a rotation on them, that's not a duo that necessarily really, really, really scares me night in and night out. It's a huge game for the Cavs. They're going to have to fucking win Huge game. Because if you lose two, yeah. it's so hard to steal one. Especially losing both games at home. Jeez. Yeah, dude. That's, and, and that's what the NBA playoffs is, right? If you can steal a game. Yep. Like, what game can you steal on the road? And that's how I think the Warriors series is going to go. Like, I'm rooting for the Kings. I love seeing the Warriors, you know, on their downfall. But someone said it on stream yesterday. and I mean, obviously, now after the fact, it makes a lot of sense. The, all I think the home teams are going to win every game in the series. So the Warriors are going to go back home, win two, tie it up, and then they go back to sack, 3-2, mm. goes back to Golden State, 3-3, three, three, and then I don't know where the, the seventh game would be played. But And, I mean, we have to talk about it, though. Draymond shouldn't have been ejected. Really? No way, dude. Why? Even as, like, if, if I took a step back as a neutral person that had no money involved in the game, Sabonis is grabbing his leg. And his, mo- his momentum is already moving forward. His left leg is like caught under Sabonis' leg. And Sabonis is literally grabbing his ankle. And Draymond's not looking down. So I'm sure he felt it, right? He definitely felt it because he was already moving that way and he went to go step. If we like interacted with that right now in a live game with live speed where I'm now trying to break, I think I would have stepped on your chest too. I think Draymond probably stepped harder than he should have. And probably realized that he has an opportunity to, because that's who Draymond is. So he probably was like, oh shit, oh my god. And then did that. But Sabonis starts it. I think you give them both texts. There's no way you eject Draymond in a game that important for both teams. And you saw the difference it made. <clears throat> in the fourth quarter, before he got ejected, the Kings were shooting 37% and had nine points, I think it was. After he got ejected, they scored 23 points, shooting 64%. So, I mean, that literally changed the outcome of the game. When you get rid of him. I mean, yeah, he's their hype man. He's And their defense, and defender. defender. Like, and there was no one, they, they didn't get a stop. But I don't think you eject him, and I, I really think, like, you know, Sabonis starts it, right? I mean, if he doesn't grab him. And also, I've never seen an acting job like Sabonis. <laughs> that was a pretty good acting job. Everyone on Twitter was like, <clears throat> was like, man, it's good to see Sabonis' backup walking. Like, I thought he was going to die. <laughs> yeah, he was... Making it seem like he just... But you thought he should have been ejected? Collapsed a lung or some shit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Draymond is in the playoffs kind of a dirty player. I mean, we've seen this before with him countless times. No, I mean, he's for sure dirty. Yeah. But I don't think you eject him, though. It looked bad on the court. And- I, but in real speed, it didn't. When you slowed it down, it obviously looked terrible. 
I think it was it was the right call in that in that moment. I think it was the right call. I will say I did love Draymond yelling at the fans. That was dope. And I think he knew exactly what he was doing because he's been there so many times before that he knew he was going to get ejected. And he thought, I'm just going to rile this up so when we get back to San Fran, that bitch is sold out and they're coming for blood. Yeah. Because Warriors fans are kind of rampant, dude. They are, for like, sure. They're gonna, and I think he knew what he was doing. And he was like, if I'm going down, like, fuck it. Like, we're, this is going to be hostile in Golden State when you guys come to our house. Yeah. Because it was like, fuck, dude. He was calling Kings fans pussies. He was like, what the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> the Kings fans are like, fuck you. He was like, pussy. <laughs> so that was great. With Adam Silver there, right? He was in, he was at that yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. Adam Silver was probably shitting, dude. <laughs> Like, you going to find him for that? You going to find him for that? He was probably like, I don't know yet. <laughs> Check with the offices. <laughs> um, all right, well, let's talk about the Wednesday's games a little bit, and then we got go to the week, and then um, we have a, a would you rather segment we're testing out. Um, the Lakers are sweeping the Grizzlies. Yep. It's even, though. I'm not surprised because it's still in Memphis. But the Lakers are sweeping the, gr- the Grizzlies. The, the odds are even? Is even. that what you said? For game two. Oh, oh, oh. They're not, not an underdog, not a favorite. It's even. I think I realistically the Grizzlies probably win a game, but uh, they're not winning that series. I don't know why people were so high on the Grizzlies going into the series. Um, I was, I've never had a doubt in the Lakers. I, I have them to win the fucking finals. Um, the Grizzlies are moose piss. Heat Bucks same exact spread as Game One. He- the, the next two games, or the next the next game is also a game I want to talk about for the Tuesday slate. But Heat Bucks same exact spread after the Heat beat them. With no Tyler Hero. Is Giannis playing? Uh, I would say the spread would reflect that. It's got to. It yeah. says, what's the level of concern surrounding Giannis's injury? But I don't have anything else about it. I mean, that it is... It says he's doubtful. Doubt. Tyler Hero's out. Wow. So why would you not just take the points with Miami and go, all right, if it's Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton against Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo and Kyle Lowry, I'd probably take the Heat plus nine. That's so many points. <coughs> Ouch. It's a lot of points. <coughs> it's probably a no bet game to be honest <coughs> wrong pipe there yeah that's tough yeah. uh it's yeah this is a stay away game for me because if Giannis plays you're probably okay that makes it hard <coughs> i wouldn't mind a minus nine if i know he's playing but if you're betting pre-game i didn't even want to bet this game the first go around me either but i thought the bucks had to be the i know them. and then of course Giannis out the one thing that would make anyone want to stay away from this Sure enough, he's out. So. so annoying, dude. So, I don't know. I have no interest in betting that series. Anything with the Heat, really, I have no interest. Your Timberwolves, or no, your, the Timberwolves are playing your Nuggets, and the spread is eight and a half for the Nuggets. I think the T-Wolves are cookie butter. Awful, dude. Cookie. Like, and honestly, terrible. I'm so hyped the Thunder aren't having to be in the series just to get slaughtered. Uh, I love seeing the T-Wolves get absolutely bitched. It makes that trade they made for Go Bears look, look so, so dumb. bad. So bad, like so incredibly bad. <laughs> yeah, so Incre- like Jokic literally has him in his pocket. Yeah, it's 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 hysterical. Um, but relating the Heat Buck spread, so same spread. This game, I don't know what to do with. Obviously, it's going to happen by the time this comes out. But you know, maybe they can hear the way we're talking through it. The Suns are still minus seven and a half to the Clippers. I looked at that. I I didn't. <clears throat> so I'm not going to lie and say I watched the full first of Game One. I looked at the box score. I watched some highlights. I don't understand why it's still seven and a half. All the guys in the Suns <clears throat> played relatively well. It wasn't like, you know, no one showed up for the Suns. I think we're just finally starting to see that the Suns trading for KD and getting rid of all of their depth is hurting them because yeah. teams like the Clippers have young guys that can come off the bench and give you 15, 16, and the Suns have nobody. Yeah. Nobody, dude. I was looking at it. The highest guy on the bench played nine minutes. Jeez. Their entire starting five almost played 43-plus minutes. Wow. I don't think KD can do that for a full championship no run. No chance. I don't think Booker can do that for – I don't think Chris Paul can do that for a full championship run. Like, it might just be take the Clippers with the points and close your eyes. Yeah. Every game. Yeah. I, I really wish PG was out there playing. Me too. It would make the series so much more interesting. But <clears throat> I, mean, I, I think the Clippers are pretty legit. They've got a really well-rounded team. They're really deep. The Suns are really just banking on their stars to take them to the promised land. And, you know, against a team that's really deep and really confident in themselves to win the series, it's going to be tough. I can't believe there's seven and a half point dogs again. I would have thought maybe four and a half, five. And it moved to eight. 
as we were speaking wow. on ESPN. No, that's on ESPN. No, but yeah, dude, you look at that game. You look at game one. Booker had 26, Aiton had 18, Craig had 22, and Kevin Durant had 27. Outside of that, the bench combined for 10 points Jeez. for the Suns. You go to the Clippers, you go, okay, Kawhi had 38, Eric Gordon had 19, Zubach had 12. Their bench, 32 points. Wow. To 10. You can't win a playoff series if you get outscored like that off the bench every single no. game. And, and outside of and outside of Landry Shamit, who sorry I misspoke, had twenty four minutes, the next highest was eight minutes off the bench. You got Kevin Durant having forty five minutes, Aiton playing thirty three, Chris Paul playing thirty nine, and Booker playing forty three. Geez. You can't win a championship doing that every no, game. You can't. You can't. And they and the Clippers, you know, with Russell Westbrook really being the difference maker, just a a playmaker, you mm -hmm. know, a guy who's gonna cause ruckus everywhere on the floor on offense and defense the the, uh, the Suns really don't have that you know no, dude just an athletic playmaker they really don't have a leader yeah you know it's like is it KD's team is it Booker's team is, is, who's is it Chris Paul's team yeah. like is he the cat like I, I don't know now I, I woke up this morning so I did this last night we'll see how it goes I wasn't gonna like expose myself but I'll do this for the pod just so they can see I've been I went ice cold yesterday and I was like you know what I'm going to gut check all my picks right before I go to bed. And then I'm going to wake up and have to look at them and be like, okay. Knicks plus five and a half. The Celtics Hawks over. I think, you know, at some point, something's got to give with this Hawks team and they're going to score like the way they normally score. Suns minus seven and a half. Because I was building the narrative of bounce back in my head. Now that I look at the game, I almost am in love with the Clippers. Devils money line, Cubs money line, Braves money line. Those are the six plays. That when I was in the lab last night after getting my soul sucked by the Oilers and the Warriors back to back, that I was like, this has to hit. Like, these are the plays that I'm in love with before. And let's see if I change my mind. So it was Devils, Braves, and what was the other one? Cubs. Like, Cubs. Knicks plus five in the over in the Celtics game. Interesting. I like it. I like it. Confident plays. Before but now that I look at it, like, what stops us from just taking the points to the Clippers again? I mean, again, it's really hard to beat a team away twice especially in the playoffs with Kevin Durant on the floor you know so I mean that's that's probably justifying the spread there but fuck dude I don't know it's just so many points it's a lot of points for sure for a narrative I feel like we just broke down that let's say KD scores 30 Booker scores 30 Chris Paul scores 20 like you still need help yeah I mean, you got Kawhi in demon mode like shit. he's like literally ready to like win another chip yeah. it feels like the way yeah. he played in game one I don't know, dude. It's a tough game. It's a really tough one. Oh, dude, I know. So I feel like the second game. we take the Clippers, too, it's a Suns 13-point win. You know it, dude. <laughs> you know it, dude. Yeah. That's what I was saying last night. I go, listen, if I sat here and I said, we're taking the Kings up plus chicken, and we're also taking the Kings plus one and a half on the ice, <laughs> no way that hits. Yeah. No way that hits. No way that is. <laughs> exactly, dude. No way it is. Warriors 3-1, or Warriors win by 10, and the Oilers win 3-1. And apparently 64% of the time, um, teams that start an NBA Series 2-0 and win, the, win it historically. 62% of the time? Yeah. Wow. I think that was a stat on ESPN they brought up, brought up on the little stat bar. Yeah. I'm not going to be shocked if the Warriors tie. So the Kings are in a 64% chance of now winning a playoff series. That's crazy, dude. <clears throat> um, the, beam, the beam is so lit. The beam is so lit. All right. Let's do go to the week. Then we'll do would you rather. And then maybe we'll try to put together a small sneak peek for the Wednesday games because a lot of the props are out already. Um, all right. Go to the week is, you know, we're at we're at hump day by the time this episode comes out. Um, takes into account, you know, last last Wednesday to this Wednesday, who your goat of that week has been. It's just someone either in your personal life, betting life, sports life, whatever it may be. That's been your goat of the week. My goat of the week happens to be it can be a team too it doesn't just have to be a person it doesn't have to be a player my go to the week is the new york knicks i'm on the bandwagon as an east coast kid fuck the nets i hate the nets because i'm from new jersey but i will ride with the knicks till they fall off the wagon wow i want new york to be back on the map i think when the knicks are good it's exciting i think they finally made the right trades and i'm all over the knicks they're my go to the week i respect it my go to the week has to go to the Thompson family. Oh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Clay Thompson, Trace Thompson. I took them in a little two-piece prize picks, the brotherly uh, entry. 
Clay over four and a half threes, Trace Thompson over half a base, and that shit was greened out. So shout out the Thompson family. Clay hit a three with 12 seconds left. Foot was on, foot was on the line. They reviewed it. They gave him the three. Cash the prize picks. Trace with a single in like the first inning. Cash it. Let's go, Thompson family. Cash it. <laughs> yeah, we go to uh, the MLS where St. Louis SC, top of the table in MLS, leading the league with 18 points. Big 5-1 victory this uh, past weekend. So mm-hmm. we're just absolutely throttling everybody wow. in our path right now. And Metro Boomin put on like one of the best sets that Coachella's ever seen. So St. Yeah. Louis is up. Stand up, baby. Stand up. St. Louis is up. The Cardinals are still around shit. Yeah, they're the worst in the NL Central, so that's when I get started. Really? Yeah. yeah, taking them yesterday should be a good look for me. Yeah, they look uh, their pitching just as expected is absolutely donkey shit. Donkey. And Kettle Marte went ding dong on me. He did. So that hurt. Yeah. Um All right, do you want to try the would you rather? Yeah, we can try the would you rather. Do we have like one or two? I was gonna go and just kinda go some off the top of my head. We had the so let's try two. Let's try let's try two. Two let's try two. Two would you rather. Okay. Yeah, we got a would you rather right, segment, right. two would you rathers. Let's do it. So we talked about this one in, in the meeting this past week, but would you rather spend an entire weekend with Amy Schumer or only bet on the Atlanta Falcons for the entire NFL season? Wow. I take the Falcons. <laughs> Falcons for sure. Yeah, I take the Falcons. We'll cover 50% of the spreads. Falcons for sure. Falcons, like not even a question, dude. <laughs> that would suck. Not even a question. How long am I hanging out with Amy for? Yeah, 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 yeah a whole weekend. No, fuck that. <laughs> would you Would no. you rather spend a whole weekend with Amy Schumer, or drive a co- across the country with <laughs> with an addied out Gary V? Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> fuck, dude. And he's addied the entire time. He's off sixty mg's, just spewing bullshit about fucking. <laughs> dude, holy shit! Because you gotta think about that car ride is fucking awful. And you're driving, NFTs? and he's just like NFTs. And you like you try to you try to like have a little bit of fun. You're like maybe we stop off for a bar. You're in your twenties. Want to go to a bar? You have so much time. Yeah, you got friends. You don't need friends. You're trying to call your dad on the road right now. You can't talk to your family. You need to cut everyone off, man. Dude, oh my god. And he's got a full bottle of it. So if he's running low, he <laughs> just throws another one back. Or Amy Schumer a whole weekend. Oh my god. <laughs> you gotta take Amy Schumer. Uh, yeah, I might go Amy, dude. That's, yeah. That car ride was would literally be my personal hell. I respect what Gary Vee does, but he like annoys the shit out of me. Like literally annoys the shit out of me. Holy shit! With his beanies on, oh my! God, I would literally I would drive the car off a bridge. Cause he wouldn't stop talking if he's yeah. added out, dude. Yeah. It'd be all day, all day. You'd be trying to listen to, like Young Thug, and he'd be like, "Turn that down." <laughs> I got an FT idea. Wait, pull off at this garage sale. <laughs> Let's rip off a fifty-year-old like mom. For her Pokemon cards. Dude, no. It's Amy Schumer for that one for <laughs> sure, dude. What would you do? Uh, yeah, same. Yeah, I'd do Amy. <laughs> wow. I'm just thinking about that ride across country with Gary Vee would be <laughs> atrocious. Would you rather drive cross country, added out Gary Vee, or have an Android the rest of your life? <laughs> no. Dude, I'd go Android, dude. I'm not doing that car ride, dude. I'm not doing that car the ride. The rest of your life, Android? Think about the car ride, though, Think about dude. the green text. Yeah, no, I'd go with Gary V, I guess. Yeah, dude, it's Fuck three, four man, days cross dude. country. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. That he's would just be an awful, because then you got to eat meals with him, and yeah, while you're eating, yeah. he's going to say some dumb shit. Like, would, you might get a couple good pieces of advice, but like other than that, you're chalked. <laughs> would you rather only pipe the worst girl you've ever had sex with for the rest of your life, or only bet on... I'll say golf. The rest of my life. Rest of your life. I can't even, can't even have sex with the girl I marry. <laughs> no. Am I? But am you, I, you can. Am I allowed to have intercourse while betting on golf? Yeah. Or yeah. Is, you can bet whoever, but you can only bet on. You can't bet on any other sport. Just golf, but you can have sex with everyone. I mean, yeah, I'll take golf, bro. Yeah, I feel like golf. Or <laughs> golf you can bet bad. on whatever you want for the rest of your life. Any, any anything, but you you're, you're just piping the worst. You're having the worst. I've had some. I've had some awful <laughs> yeah. experiences. Yeah, so you got to go with your worst one. You got to go with your worst. Give me the golf. Give me the golf. <laughs> yeah, golf for sure. Go- <laughs> give me the well, golf. Like, golf's not that bad because I feel like I could get into golf. <laughs> Dude, golf's awesome, but like the rest of your life, you can't bet on anything else. So no NBA, suck. no NFL, no MLB. That would suck. Dude. That would suck. I've nope. just had some awful ones, dude. You're just a fan of the game. I got like three right now. I wouldn't want to ever go back. <laughs> ever. 
And then it's like, but I could wake up and like bet on like the NBA. Yeah. yeah. No, give me the golf. Probably gotta take the golf. Yeah, I go golf. Yeah, I go live. Yeah, I go golf. I'll go golf. I'll go golf. I'll, go I'll golf. find a, I'll find a way to make a living elsewhere. I'll find a way to make some coin yeah. on golf. You could do PP squares with golf. All right, let's do a quick sneak nuke for the Wednesday games. Uh, I feel like those are actually some good games to have. It we have Heat Bucks, Timberwolves, Nuggets, Lakers, Grizzlies. Um, let's do a two piece gob and, and hit it this time. Please. I would I would love to do that for us. Um, I would really look forward to that. Um, I really 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 want to do. Austin Reeves over 15 and a half and ride the hot hand because I think we saw it with Malik Monk. I didn't trust him coming off the bench, scoring another 30 piece, and he proved me wrong. So I feel like maybe hot hand, we stay with Austin Reeves, or do you not like that? I like it. I like it. Um, I think we go something with Jamal Murray, either his points or assists. I was also looking at the 22 and a half points. I don't mind that. We could do points and assists. Nah, one or the other. Or do you think blowout factor, though? No. Does I that mean, not scare they you? They were up by 40, and he still had both in the green. Oh, but if you go to Jamal Murray, that makes you want to go to a goat and be like, all right, Jimmy Butler drops 30 on the Bucks with no Giannis. Your call, bro. Are you on points for Jamal? I'll go points. Fuck. Oh, wait. Do they have it? What? Hold on. If they have my wagon, I'm going to literally drop a nuke on this. Drew Holiday points and assists? No, they don't have it. Oh, fuck. I would have dropped a nuke on that, dude. If you wait till Wednesday, take Drew Holiday points and assists. But for the sake of the sneak nuke presented by Prize Pick for the Wednesday, I will go... Austin Reeves, 15 and a half. I'm just going to trust it. I'm going to trust points. the points. Jamal Murray points. Jamal Murray points. Reeves is him. I'm going to put 200 on it. Two and 600. I haven't seen a prize picks hit in four days. Just, just keep that in mind. Yeah. I mean, you know, when in doubt, you got to go back to the two piece gobs. Our sneak group presented by prize picks is Jamal Murray and Austin Reeves, both more than their points. Um, this has been another episode of TFM Bets. You're going to a wedding this weekend, so I don't know when we're going to record. Do you go leave Friday? Uh, Thursday. You leave Thursday? I'm excited for you, man. That's going to be so much fun, yep. dude. We'll yeah. record Thursday morning. He doesn't leave till Thursday later, I think. Okay, yeah. word. Um, all right, well, this has been another episode. Why don't you tell me where they can find you? Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, at Book it, or at Book it with Trent. Follow the Twitch channel, at Book it Sports, and tune into the surgical stream every weekday, 1 p.m. Central. Uh, you can find me everywhere, Mikey Overs, and then on Instagram, michael.j.overs. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We really appreciate you as always. And we will be seeing. Appreciate it, guys.